Hello. Welcome to the EM50. This is actually a 1997 uh, GMC motorhome, a uh, 40-year-old vehicle uh, that was the uh, used as the character of the EM50 in the movie Stripes with uh, Bill Murray. I bought one of these things as a mobile studio, and uh, so that as the, as things get uh, interesting this year, 2017, we'll be able to go out and about. Insofar as the um, uh, many numerous issues to discuss, <coughs> excuse me, uh, let's start with the uh, rampaging video theft. Or not theft, I you know, they're borrowing them and, and making um, ad revenue off of these things. Now here's the deal. Uh, in 2013, I had uh, my image, my name copyrighted. So anybody who takes my, and also trademarked, and so anybody who takes my videos, downloads them, and then re-uploads them to YouTube um, uh, does so at risk of copyright violation as well as trademark. So they're registered with the U.S. Um, Patent and Trademark Office. Uh, that registration went through in 2013. So now what I'm doing is considering how to uh, facilitate an asymmetric response uh, to the individuals that can really control this, which is YouTube. Uh, I am not associated with WebBot Radio. I don't use those terms. If in any way, any place, you see a video of mine that is not uh, attributable to the producer and, uh, and it's not on my site, Cliff High, my channel is Cliff High at YouTube. If, uh, if it's on any other uh, site at YouTube, any other channel, uh, and it's not attributable to that uh, channel owner, uh, it's not an interview with uh, with me that was authorized. They've just downloaded it, chopped it up, and reloaded it out of context. Uh, no attribution, no date range, uh, thinking, uh, making people think it's new. It's clickbait. It's clickbait for ad revenue. So I'm really irritated at YouTube. I believe that there's substantial reason to uh, consider myself uh, damaged. That is to say that the ad revenue that is in uh, who knows how large a, a range uh, has been um, uh, taken from me, and uh, it's all uh, under YouTube's ability to control through um, Google and AdSense, and uh, it may warrant legal action. Uh, what I'm to start doing is date and time stamping these videos as I put them up. It's going to be really annoying because I'm going to put them straight where everybody can see them constantly during the whole video, uh, an easy process with the editing software I have. And we'll let it go at that for the time being until we can see what sort of resolution presents itself. Larry issue. Uh, aside to that, there's the issue of the, um, uh, let's call it um, the Twittering around. <laughs> okay, because what's going on is that uh, Twitter, YouTube, uh, Google Plus are doing things like um, uh, in such a way that sure feels like censorship. And they'll take your uh, the number of uh, people that are allowed to subscribe to you uh, or, or follow you on your Twitter account, and they'll cap it. And that's it. No more. So you get uh, 80 new subscribers that day. You come back and check, and that's like 8 in the morning. You're going to check your stats, and, oh, I got 80 new subscribers yesterday. Big whoop, you know, hooray. You come back at uh, 6 that evening, and, hey, 60 out of those 80 are gone. And uh, then the next day, maybe, uh, you know, 102 are gone, uh, and it was only 70 growth. So it's a net loss. They're, they're pushing you down to a certain level. And so they're capping your uh, followers. They're restricting your ability to communicate, and they're delaying it so that its context is no longer relevant, in their opinion. In my opinion, of their opinion. <laughs> anyway, so um, the idea is that what they're doing is they're uh, letting you post your tweet, or, or uh, post on the, the, your, your comment onto YouTube or um, at, at the Google+. Plus. And then what happens is that, and you see it, no worries. And then 10 minutes later, it's not there anymore. And it was never really promulgated out. It was just a display loop, basically just for you. And then maybe they release it 8 or 10 hours later. Uh, and I say maybe because it's very difficult to track it down anymore. Uh, so there's this um, uh, in, inbuilt or inherent uh, um, aggravation that's going on in dealing with the social media. 
which are basically internet ghettos, okay? They, they herd us into these little areas in what is the vast reaches of the internet. So I, I don't like the little ghettos anyway, but um, now they're starting to be aggressive little ghettos. Little mind think ghettos where they're saying to us, okay, you know, you got to think as we do. Bring your host and to check the microphone. Yeah, it's all right. Okay, so anyway, the um, uh, other part there is the um, uh, censorship is algorithmically insidious. It's very good. They're getting really good at it. And so it can be applied at will. They just have to flag you in certain ways. And then they'll just probably choose attributes out of a big list that, you know, how they want to particularly um, uh, hassle you, what kind of uh, aggravation they want to cause, you know, delay or total censorship or bumping you off or, you know, making it seem like you're committing crimes or whatever. And then all this stuff will happen. So um, uh, not a good time to be trying to do things like social marketing. Uh, or marketing via social media, uh, because, and here's another thing, if I were an advertiser, I'd sue the piss out of these people. I really would. I mean, I've stopped advertising. There's no way I can be assured that I won't spend another dime with Google or Twitter or any of these people this year. I'll advertise in other ways. I'll spend my money much more effectively. Uh, but here's the, here's the deal. As an advertiser, how can I be assured that my money is actually being spent as they say it is when they're censoring the tweets that I put out? And it's like, uh, yo, dude, I'm spending money on your platform, and here you are saying I can't use it? And are you lying to me that you actually did present those ads? I want to see proof. I want to see a list. I want to see which ads were placed on what site when for what person, what that I paid for. Um, you know, and it's getting down to that point. So I can't, in good faith anymore, support advertising on social media. I know how to do it very well. I was getting 82% return or a conversion rate on... Um, Tweet engagements, uh, higher than 82%, actually. And so my methods worked very well. I don't think they're censoring me for that. I think they're censoring me because, <laughs> because I'm a pain in the butt to them uh, with the language I use. Uh, but in any event, so uh, this whole thing about the, uh, the social media censorship, I see as an advertising issue, and the best way to quell the whole thing would be to have some kind of a, a mass uprising with advertisers who are basically getting fucked. They have no guarantee at all that their um, advertising is getting to uh, anywhere close to the eyeballs that are going to be appropriate for it to be seeing. Their, their criteria are hopelessly screwed up. And I'll give you an example. <clears throat> There's this um, fellow out there, Ty Lopez. Ty Lopez has a, uh, a niche market. He's very good at it. And his niche market is very clearly identified, very easily identified. And it, and it falls into this category, which could be delineated first by demographics, by age. The vast majority of his audience are going to be uh, young people from, say, you know, as early as the 13-year-old uh, out to maybe, well, let's say, uh, mid-40s as most affected, right? And then there will be some overlap from the mid-40s into the 50s. But his audience should not include people that are in my age category. And, they, and I constantly see his ad, adverts on YouTube. Every single time I see them, Ty Lopez is losing money because his advert is being shown to somebody that's outside the demographics that he's paying for. I'm not a candidate for any of his coursework. And, and the reason that this is failing, I can, I can show explicitly because I have the technical chops to be able to tell you linguistically and program, programmatically why their algorithm fails. And it has to do with linguistics and so on. And it will continue to fail uh, especially now that they're censoring. So they've set themselves up into this loop. So advertisers, pay attention here. Social media people that are practicing censorship are screwing you. They probably, at their marketing level, know they're screwing you. And they know they can't stop screwing you. You're not getting what you're paying for. And the reason you're not getting what you're paying for is you're paying for a certain level of demographics. The way that they delineate those demographics are linguistics. The people and the words that they use in defining themselves and then the words that further they use in using that social media. These things are analyzed linguistically. The, the analysis is then uh, used to extract even further levels of demographics to drill in on these people so that you can potentially get your money specifically one-to-one -one right in front of uh, the per get your message right in front of the person you want it to be in front of within your clearly able to be defined target market. 
and uh, you're not getting that. And now, the reason you're not getting that has nothing to do with the people that are trying to sell you their marketing, that are trying to do the ads for you and aid you in this process. It doesn't really relate to them. It relates to the buttheads that are running the social media that decided they can use this social media as a censorship uh, vehicle and in so doing have altered the fundamental uh, linguistics that, that drive the algorithms that provide the social media its power. I know this. I track the Twitter feed. It has been significantly changed since June of last year. And I can actually identify May 27th, late May of 2016, as being a significant uh, period of change. And uh, the Twitter feed has altered. The linguistics have been suppressed. In so suppressing those linguistics, pay attention again, advertisers, your, your money is being wasted because they're skewing things. They're making you think that certain types of people exist within the social media and, and, and making other people disappear. But those other people are still using linguistics that uh, or language that causes your advertising to be presented to them in a totally goofy fashion where you've got, um, and, and it's going to get even worse as we go along, but you've got people like myself that are technically right on the cusp of retirement being advertised to as though I want to rush on out and start a new business and uh, uh, enjoy all the benefits that Ty Lopez offers in his classes on you know how to make $70 million in, in the first five months of doing this kind of thing. Um, you know, so it's, it's just a really strange situation where the censorship people and the, and the way they've uh, implemented it have skewed the linguistic base such that the advertising is crumbling on the social media. So has censorship killed Google? Has it killed Twitter? Or is it in the process of, of throttling them off, strangling them because they're warping the language that, are, that is allowed to be used? Will p political correctness allow advertising to exist? I don't think so. Not if they're trying to sell me Ty Lopez's ads. And every time I go onto YouTube and I do that quite a bit, Ty Lopez loses money. Uh, you know, and, uh, and beyond that, he loses opportunity and time. The person he should be putting that ad in front of is not getting it because asshole uh, YouTube is serving it up to me <laughs> because their linguistics are so skewed they think I'm ready to rush out and buy his services or that I fit within his demographics. And if he, I spent money on their platform, it really pisses me off that, they're, that Twitter is, um, uh, and Google are hassling me. You know, I was one of their customers. Cash went out right to them. Not anymore. No. You know, this is the thing about the social media. They uh, don't have uh, anything other than a first mover advantage. But that first mover advantage is a very narrow thing that exists only in the idea of confidence and um, an emotional association uh, felt by the users. It's an emotion. All someone has to do is be very astute at tweaking other people's emotion and set about in a systematic campaign to tweak those emotions away from these social media towards some other, and there go Twitter and Google, and there go their entire revenue base. If I were advertising on Google, man, or if I had to deal with Google at the SEO level, if I gave a rat's ass, basically is what it amounts to, especially as an advertiser, I would be so mad I would be trying to form class action lawsuits because they're, they're screwing, uh, they're even more egregious than Twitter or YouTube. Uh, they're the top dog in terms of screwing the advertiser over for their revenue being um, uh, misdirected and misused. And they never offer proof that they've actually uh, put those ads in front of the type of people that you say that you want to get them in front of. Now, I built into my ads certain um, tracking characteristics such that I could find out from the respondents how good they were. And I was pretty close. Like I say, I got some phenomenal conversion rates on my uh, Twitter ad campaign. And I did almost as well as on Google. And then, boom, along comes Google censorship and Twitter censorship, and psh, that was it. So uh, a couple of major uh, things there. We're 15 plus minutes into this. I'll try and chop some shit out. Um, anyway, though, so now I've got a studio. Uh, not not hamstrung by our circumstances in our tight little quarters and so we're going to go ahead and uh, be able to make some more videos and I'm going to start figuring some way to timestamp them in a very obvious way so that if theft occurs if they're downloaded and reloaded they're going to have to do some real work to get that out of it. Uh, I do plan to do some road trip um, 
itinerary and destination uh, to be determined. Uh, we'll discuss it later. Uh, it'll include video work. Uh, that's the point of it, actually, is I've got some business reasons to go out and about and do some uh, specific video uh, work. So we're going to take on, uh, advantage of the opportunity and see what we can happen. What can happen there? I may decide uh, over, over the course of this next month or so, depending on how things go. I may decide to relocate uh, all of my video work off of YouTube, and so this is something I'm considering, and I'm uh, working with some of the other um, hosting sites at the moment in terms of uh, doing research on them uh, for um, specific advantages and disadvantages I would have in dealing with that, because I'll still have to deal with some level of the YouTube theft component. But uh, it seems that a uh, more easily brought copyright infringement uh, suit uh, could be sustained cheaper if, uh, at least this is some of the advice I got, had gotten, uh, if the theft was actually um, cross-platform rather than within the platform. Uh, because within the terms and service of YouTube, it's, it's tricky. It's really tricky the way they've got this stuff written up. Uh, anyway, though, so uh, I've got a 1977 uh, EM50, which is that designation, like I say, and we're going to have to do some rehab here. Uh, a lot of it's in good shape. Uh, there's no rust on the frame I can see. I've got to do a huge level of rebuild on the transmission. Uh, the, all of the cabinetry has to be redone, uh, but um, uh, in general, not bad. A uh, lot of work, but uh, Kayla and I are going to set on to it on Monday. And I've got some other people coming on over to see what they can provide in the way of help here. And we'll get this thing um, uh, up and running and ready to go out on the road, hopefully this summer. And uh, <laughs> join into some of the fun, some of the festivities. So uh, I've got another report coming out uh, end of this month. It's likely to be a little bit long. There was uh, quite a bit of data. We're in this uh, period, a huge period of transition and chaos that brings a lot of language out. Uh, so we've, we've had a bunch. Um, let's just deal with some of the real quick issues here. There's the issue of the Bitcoin fork. It's like at this stage, don't worry about it. In our data sets, if it, sh it, it may be in there. I've never actually looked for anything uh, specifically that, uh, at that level. But here's what I deal with in terms of Bitcoin language. For each word that we end up look at having in our data sets on Bitcoin, I've got maybe 200,000 or more. Actually, it's closer to 500,000 at times. Uh, uh, of words for UFOs. So uh, Bitcoin is not very well discussed. And the other, other altcoins are, are virtually unknown. And you have to understand, most of the people on the planet, and indeed, the vast majority of people on the internet, have never heard of and don't have a clue about Bitcoin. You know, they use Netflix. They, they, they um, you know, send emailed grandpa, and that's it. They don't know about Bitcoin. So just because we're obsessed with the stuff doesn't <laughs> doesn't mean that there's a huge amount of chatter out there about it in a meaningful fashion that would generate prescient um, uh, ancillary links through the lexicon. There's nothing really I can do about that part of it. So uh, and the altcoins are even spoken of even smaller. I mean, I occasionally get little things, little hints that some of these other guys are going to be doing okay, um, and it just has to do with a vast amount of of generalized discussion that goes on, and then also now all of the censorship and crap because that's really impacted, as I say, the Twitter feed and uh, Google and some of these other things. Now, the Bitcoin hard fork, should it occur, uh, you know, because there's still lots of doubt, hasn't happened yet, but should it occur, it doesn't show in our data as being meaningful bump in the road. And also bear in mind, if it occurs, for every Bitcoin you have now, you'll have two. So hey, and guess what? If one of the two Bitcoin forks fails, big deal. You're back to where you started. You've lost nothing. So chill out. Don't sweat it. Go about your business with Bitcoin. I, you know, our data sets don't show it as being any kind of a big hiccup in the, in the get along. So uh, no worries. Uh, 